Hello, dear children. Namaste to all of you, and welcome back to the terminology series. And here we are with yet another couple of chapters. In fact, not just one single chapter. Terms from two different chapters of ICSE Class Ten Biology. And this is me, Ambika, your biology master teacher, right here on this amazing platform of Vedantu. Okay, guys. So let me just remind you, just in case you've not subscribed to this channel yet, please click on the subscribe button right now. Because until your exams are done, and even if you want to begin your next academic year's preparation, always remember, this is the place where you can find a lot of things that will be very, very useful to you. So stay subscribed, and you will find everything on time. All right. So as always, what is our first goal in a session? Yes, a positive quote, You're right? And it's right here. Here it is. The past is the past. The only way to make a better life is from inside the present. Isn't that wonderful? And look at that. Present. It, there's a beautiful present, a gift box sort of thing in which it's written. And I think that's like a symbolic uh, Real representation, it's called present because it's actually a gift. It's a present. And that is amazing. Past is past. You really can't do anything about it. So that's okay. But what is in control right now is this very moment. So make the best use of it right now so that you can ensure a much better future. No point uh, cribbing later on if you're not using your time properly right now. Okay. Yes. So let us begin. So children, today we are going to be discussing... Um, Terms from two chapters, excretory system and nervous system. All right. So some of the most important terms are all that we've picked for this. So it's right here. What exactly would excretion be? Now, excretion can be defined as a process where the metabolic waste, all sorts of metabolic waste products get eliminated from an organism. So this could be um, this could be a lot of uh, nitrogenous waste products. Of course, the word excretion majorly refers to elimination of nitrogenous waste matter and the primary uh, excretory organs in human beings would be the kidneys the kidneys are the primary excretory organ and then apart from this there are also a few secondary excretory structures like the lungs which help in um, elimination of unwanted gases up to a certain extent skin also acts as a sort of secondary uh, excretory system the liver also is an example for the for a secondary excretory um, organ right okay but then kidneys are our primary focus in this particular chapter so this is what it is children majorly what you need to know is excretion is not synonymous to ejection it is not not the same as i'll write it here not the same as ejection what would ejection be? Ejection or ejection, right? Ejection is the opposite of ingestion, which is the opposite of eating. So elimination of uh, waste products in the form of fecal matter, that is what ejection would be. And this occurs only through the anus in the human body. All right. Yes. So remember that. Now, secretion, what would secretion be? Secretion is a process by which substances are produced um, or, or and discharged from a cell or maybe a group of cells, something like a gland or something like an organ or something like a group of cells. Why? Why are they discharged? This would be usually for a particular function in the organism or sometimes it could be for the purpose of excretion as well. So secretion, discharge of substances from cells or group of, groups of cells um, into other parts of the body okay so yes and now coming to homeostasis homeostasis is a term which we quite often hear in biology so um, in general simply put we can say homeostasis is the sum total of all the metabolic activities happening inside an organism so many metabolic functions occur, lots of building up processes, lots of breakdown processes, which we call up anabolism and catabolism respectively. And the sum total of all of them together is what we call homeostasis. So the tendency towards a relatively stable equilibrium between interdependent elements as maintained by physiological processes. We can explain it this way in simple language or as I told you, sum total of all metabolic activities. Okay, 
right next one hilum what is hilum now um, this is a part of the kidneys kidneys as i have told you is the primary excretory organ this is what the hilum is see where it's marked it's right here this this structure okay so this particular structure wherein um, the a sort of a <coughs> a recessed central fissure as it, as it can be described where the vessels the blood vessels nerves and ureters can pass so this part of the kidney where this part okay into which all those uh, nerves and blood vessels and ureters can all pass that is what we call the hilum all right now comes another quite often confused term with hilum it's called renal pelvis um there's no i'm not surprised uh, that uh, these two terms are confusing because they are very very close to each other because renal pelvis is this part this is the renal pelvis this area the enlarged upper end of the ureter so if this is the kidney uh, the ureter begins here and continues in this way so the enlarged upper part of the ureter this is what we call the renal pelvis right so what exactly is the ureter the tube through which urine flows from the kidneys into the urinary bladder this is what the renal pelvis would be so hilum and renal pelvis okay now micturition what is micturition the act of urination that's the simplest way of um, describing mict what micturition is the process of expelling urine from the bladder so a set of muscles which we call sphincter muscles play a major role in micturition because up to a certain extent the sphincter muscles will have the ability to hold the urine until the urinary bladder completely expands so this is what is given here the bladder gets filled and the first sensation to void uh, comes here when the bladder is approximately half full the normal desire to uh, void and then finally it would be micturition right so these are the four stages and uh, sphincter muscles play a major role in this process okay right now uriniferous tubules what are they it sounds like something that you may not know but it's not it's something that you've been learning through this entire chapter nephrons or kidney tubules or uriniferous tubules as we call them these structures which you see these blue structures which you see here the smallest structural and functional units of kidneys that's what nephrons are right so what are the major parts of them uh, parts of these nephrons first of all the bowman's capsule and then comes the pct or the proximal convoluted tubule followed by the loop of henle the dct and the collecting duct these are the five major parts of the nephron and remember the major function is to filter blood and form urine and as a result um, in the process of urine formation by the three steps what are they ultra filtration reabsorption and secretion these are the three processes children in case you have trouble understanding those check out the bio bites in 15 minute series or check out among series whichever playlist you can find out um, on this channel you will find the answers to all your questions right there okay yes so formation of urine is the primary role of uh, nephrons but in this process of urine formation they also end up uh, performing a lot of other functions like bringing about um, a balance of minerals and water in the human body maintaining blood pressure and things like that all right yes now comes the next term which is hematuria what is hematuria hematuria is the term which we give to the um, condition where blood is present in a person's urine so ideally blood cells red blood cells should not be found in urine because they don't normally red blood cells don't have the ability to pass through the bowman's capsule during ultra filtration but because of some kind of an underlying disorder some kind of an underlying abnormality or a problem somewhere it is quite possible so this condition wherein blood cells red blood cells are found in urea and as a result we can see generally presence of blood in urea in urine this is what we call hematuria right so this is it now comes the next one glycosuria glycosuria is a condition again um, it's it's more of a rare condition so here um, simple sugars like glucose get eliminated with urine ideally it should be reabsorbed in the kidney tubules but sometimes because of some underlying uh, abnormality 
glucose instead of getting reabsorbed into the body gets eliminated in the urine or perhaps there's an excess of urine no, sorry excess of glucose in the urine so this glucose when it's excreted along with the urine despite normal or low blood glucose levels so this is what it is despite normal blood glucose levels which means the person is not really diabetic in a person like that if there is a lot of glucose found in the urine that condition is called glycosuria renal glycosuria okay right children remember this term renal is something you need to know you really must know as far as um, studies of kidneys and excretory system is concerned pulmonary for lungs uh, cardio or cardiac for the heart um, cerebro or uh, maybe uh, cephalic and all of those terms relating to your brain um, renal relating to your kidneys osteo relating to your bones so many such interesting prefixes in biology once you're familiar with those guessing the meaning of terms is going to be a lot more easy lot easier than you ever thought okay right next one all right so i think it's time to take a quick break children remember vote vedantu online talent exam uh, which uh, has been scheduled on four sundays 28th of march 4th of april 11th of april and the 18th of april so um, of course you all would have registered for this i'm sure about that because we've been telling you constantly because we sincerely want all of you to be able to benefit from all this that's happening so not just on these dates children of course these four sundays are um, dates that you must remember just block your personal calendars and note it down somewhere and register right now but apart from that there is a lot more beyond this okay so what exactly would that be children vote is going to be an all india level free exam you don't have to pay anything for it it's going to be happening free completely free of cost so um as i've told you the dates already and the time is going to be 3 p.m okay so the last uh, one is going to be happening on the 18th of april and then before that would be 11th of april and the the, the other two first two dates perhaps you already are aware of um what is the advantage now after this you get in-depth performance analysis with an all india rank so you know where you stand compared to your peers across the country and that is amazing right guaranteed scholarship from a pool of over 500 crore and then daily challenges to win exciting prizes worth one crore and you also get to be vedantu's ceo for one day and even win a trip to nasa and i think that's the most exciting part and uh, being uh, vedantu ceo for one day means that you also get to contribute your ideas to this generation's uh, learning right and that is such an amazing thing to be able to do um so yes children apart from these four dates remember you can also win exciting prizes you stand a chance to win an all expenses paid um, educational trip to nasa in the united states of america and as i was telling you for daily and weekly challenges exciting prizes and gadgets are going to be awarded drones telescopes microscopes laptops um so many many more things that you can see here in front of you and maybe you cannot see here in front of you so many other amazing things and you can also become the ceo of uh, vedantu i've told you that you can contribute your ideas as well now what else do you do you can uh, first of all you need to register and create your voter id card so when you register make sure you give all your correct details okay so uh, you give your name uh, and then your grade and um, your board icse cbsc maharashtra board whatever that is and your target exam what exam you are going to be appearing for right so this is how you do and this step is very very important children because for every grade and for every board the pattern of questions would vary okay so this is a very important step um so yes your voter id card would be generated next step would be to pick your vote days from these sundays any of these dates or all of these dates that's totally up to you and um yes once you have picked your vote dates you will be completely done with it and this is going to be your exam format for my children out here who are um sincere viewers of this particular channel vedanto 9th and 10th english this is going to be your pattern mat and sat so mental aptitude test and the scholastic aptitude test also you will have a uh, paper in both both of these um, uh, sides so math will be 
you will have 35 questions from math, mental ability, 35 questions from scholastic aptitude. And then this is the marking scheme. Four marks for every right answer, minus one for every wrong answer, okay? The duration is going to be 90 minutes. So an hour and a half, that's it, okay? Now, what are squads? Something super amazing and super interesting because you can create your own squads or, can, or you can join an existing squad and win big. Even as squads, you can earn a lot of uh, new prizes and a lot of exciting rewards. Once you go to the website, you will be able to figure out how exactly this works. Okay, So you can create or join a squad. You can uh, solve weekly challenges. You can earn additional V coins and win additional prizes exciting prizes every single day so so many interesting things like you get to create your squad logo you can create your squad name and the squad slogan and so much more that happens there all right children so don't miss out on this opportunity register right now using the link given below okay vidantu.com slash vote you can just check out that now yes coming to the next term which is albuminuria. Albuminuria is a pathological condition. It's a, uh, it's a health condition wherein um, in the urine, a protein called albumin is present. So albumin, globulin, fibrinogen are all proteins normally found as part of the blood, as part of blood. Um, so ideally, these shouldn't, these shouldn't be found in urine, especially beyond a certain level. Uh, so when albumin is present, in an abnormal concentration in urine, that condition is called albuminuria. So easy to remember, right? Glycosuria, hematuria, albuminuria, and so on. Presence of all these in blood, uh, in urine is what it means. All right? Yes. Now, uh, diuresis. What would diuresis be? Diuresis um, is a condition where the kidneys filter too much bodily fluid. So what happens is basically urine would be really, really dilute. Dilute urine is produced. This is the main problem here. So diuresis is the process by which uh, the reabsorption of liquids doesn't occur normally in the body, usually as a result of a problem with the levels of the hormone ADH, anti-diuretic hormone vasopressin. Right, children? So this is what it's associated with, diuresis. Now comes the term osmoregulation. The maintenance of a normal, of a constant osmotic pressure. The mineral and liquid, the, the fluid um, balance and the mineral balance, everything should be present in a state of balance, right? So a maintenance of constant osmotic pressure in the body fluids of an organism is called osmoregulation. So simply put, it is the... Uh, control of water and salt concentrations in the person's body. So when I say salt, it's not just about the salt we eat, but it also includes a lot of other elements, which um, like sodium, chlorine, potassium, and so many others that are part of your body fluids. This is osmoregulation. All right, of course, dialysis, one very, very important step. We also call it a hemodialysis. So um, what happens is, this is a, um, a medical procedure that's made use of in a person whose kidneys are not working properly. So we also call this artificial kidneys. Artificial kidneys. Because if the person's kidneys are not functioning, there has to be some mechanism. Thankfully, uh, medical science has advanced uh, technology for all this. The mechanism by which the blood can be filtered pretty much like your kidneys would have done had you been a healthy person, right? This is what we call artificial kidneys or dialysis or hemodialysis. So yes, that's about it, children. To know more about it, uh, check out our playlist, the main playlist. Now we're not done with the session yet. The major uh, terms from the chapter excretion are done. Uh, more references, as I was telling you, BioBytes, uh, One Shot Series, Umang Series, these three, all right? Now, okay. Now again, time for another quick break before we get started with the nervous system. Children, um, now this is the time when you can explore multiple le learning options and you can gain 100% knowledge and as a result, score 100% marks. How exactly? You can join Vedantu's unlimited life classes with fun and super high level quizzes, which are going to be very, very interactive. 
very, very interesting. You can compete with students across the world and across the country. And children, one very good feature is that replays are interactive. So even if you have uh, missed some session while it's happening live, you will definitely get option, get the um, get access to the replay of that particular session. Um, or even if you just want to watch it once again, you can watch the replay of it. But it wouldn't seem just like um, just like a one-sided lecture wherein you are watching a blank or say, uh, a plain recorded uh, video or a le recorded lecture. But rather, this is going to be a replay where quizzes and leaderboards are going to be live. And that is super amazing because of the beauty of the technology. And children, you can also download handwritten notes of your master teachers. That option is also going to be available to you. Doubt solving, assignments, tests. Without these, your preparation can't be called complete, right? So these are also going to be a part of this, which means it's a complete platform, a complete online education platform wherein you are learning from the comfort of your home. And children, free 5,000 plus micro courses and crash courses that you can choose from, which means once you are registered for pro subscription, you don't pay anything extra for these. That's it. It comes as part of it. Less is more. So that's us coming to the pricing part of it. Children, there will be a link you will find in the description box below. Subscribe to Vedantu Pro now. And there will be a link next to it. You can just click on it. And remember the coupon code is AMBPRO to avail the best benefits we have, the best discounts we have. Now, children, those of you who want to check out um, the details of sessions for 2021 exams, the one month subscription would cost you 1500 for all subjects together. For those of you who want to stay subscribed for a slightly longer duration, uh, it would be 5000. Okay, for all the subjects together, of course, coupon code AMBPRO once that is applied, it reduces to 1200. That's it. Remember, it's not per subject, it's for all your subjects together. And uh, for the longer term subscription, that's going to be 4,000. Okay, so uh, that is completely your choice whether to go for the one month or the longer term subscription and all of those. But in case you are a beginner, first timer at Vedantu's live classes, I would suggest one month makes better sense because you need time to experience it for yourself. Whatever demonstration we may give here, I think it's important that you get a feel of it yourself right? Only then would you be able to make the best decision. So think about only the one month subscription for the time being and calculate the per session cost. In a one month subscription, you will get access to at least 200 live sessions if used correctly. And that means it comes down to a per class price of rupees six. That's it, which is even lesser priced than the regular lace packet. And for students who are targeting the next year's exams, which is going to be the next academic year session 2022. So I think this would be more applicable for students going from ICSE um, 8th to 9th this year or 9th to 10th this year. Okay. And going to appear for final exams in 2022. For you guys, this is here. So um, ICSE 10th graders right now who are appearing for 2021 board exams you're probably wondering what is in store for you i will tell you that as well hold on for a bit i'll just finish this the pro price for this is going to be 3300 per month and uh, for one full year as well you have the option of uh, subscribing and that would cost you 38880 so i know that seems like a lot but let us do the math and find out what it's actually like, the reality. Um, the coupon code is going to be AMBPRO, of course. Once you apply that, it reduces to 2640 over here. And this reduces to 31,104. All right. Now, uh, yes, calculating the per session price is the best way of making sure you are making the right decision. You are making the right choice. So as you can see, the number of classes that you can avail in a one month subscription would be 200 sessions and in a one year session it's going to be obviously 2400 live sessions so that makes it easier for us to calculate the per session cost 13.2 rupees over here for one month and 12.96 for the one full year of course not too much of difference but definitely it's got a little bit of advantage over there but again i would suggest children go by the one month subscription for the time being and experience it for yourself. You will see whatever said and done, it's after all your comfort that matters. All right, children. So experience it and then go ahead for the longer term subscription if you are comfortable with it. Okay, right. So 
Yes, of course, that's also very, very reasonably priced um, and lesser priced than your kurkure solid masti masala. Okay, so now children, for your uh, benefit, to make it easier for you to uh, understand, just to give you an idea about what the platform looks like once you are a registered student, look at this. Yes, uh, this is what your student's dashboard would look like. The date, the upcoming sessions, the past sessions. So what you see here is they are all the past sessions. So the past sessions, the, the actual date on which it happened, the topic of the session, um, and uh, who the tutor was. Of course, this is my teacher dashboard, which is why everywhere you see only my name and my subject. And um, the time at which it actually happened, originally happened, the replay button is here. The get notes button is here. Okay, so uh, once you click on the replay, you can watch it exactly like how it happened wh while it was happening live. So all the doubts which were asked uh, while the session happened live, all the leaderboards which were uh, uh, used in the session, everything, you will be able to see everything end to end and the doubts as well. And the notes, of course, you click on the get notes button and you will be able to download handwritten notes that your master teachers used during the session. Okay. So that is super amazing. Make the best use of everything right now before it gets late, children. All right. Yes. So coming back here, let us continue with the next part. Yes, here we are. So coming to the terms of nervous system, uh, not too many of them, but of course, the major terms, the major key terms, which you need to know here. Um, if you think about terms like parts of the eye, parts of the ear and all of those, um, probably our session is never gonna end of course i think those would form um more of an uh, find more of an important place in the one shot series and in our umang series where we've discussed all of those important terms that you need to know so here are the key terms which you definitely must know in this chapter so yes neuron starting with neuron the functional structural and functional unit of the nervous system this is what a neuron is we also call it the nerve cell so simply put it's the nerve cell like nephrons are your kidney cells neurons would be your nerve cells and they can conduct impulses impulse is the term we give to the messages conducted by your nerve cells right okay so parts of the neuron children be familiar with those like cell body or the cyton these branch like uh, structures called dendrites the nucleus is here the axon which is this elongated structure myelin sheath and so on Next is, yes, the cell body, the compact area, this part, the cellular structure, this head, the compact area, which includes the cytoplasm and the nucleus. So since it's the cell body, obviously the nucleus would be found over there, right? Okay, now dendrites, what are dendrites? A short branched extension of a nerve cell along which impulses received from other cells at synapses are transmitted to the cell body. Simply put, um, if this is one neuron, okay, I know that's not the best image, but at least something for you to understand. This is the adjacent neuron and uh, here there is a gap which we call the synaptic cleft, right, or the synapse. So from here impulses are conducted into the synapse and with the help of dendrites, dendrites are conducting it towards the neuron towards the cell body and axons conduct it away from the cell body dendrites towards the cell body axons away from the cell body so that's what dendrites are axons will be i've told you that the elongated nerve fiber portion which conducts impulses away from the cell body this is what axons are now the term neurolemma or neurilemma it's also called neurilemma or uh, other terms which are used for this are Schwann's sheath. So what exactly is this? We can say that uh, this is the outermost layer of Schwann cells which are found here, which are found surrounding the axon of the neuron. What are Schwann cells? These are the Schwann cells which are surrounding the axon. This is the axon and it is surrounded by membranous protective layers and Certain cells which protect them, we call them Schwann cells. So what exactly are Schwann cells? Uh, to be more specific, Schwann cells are a type of what we call glial cells. Now, what are glial cells in the first place then? Now, uh, glial cells would be 
uh, those cells which perform a role in um, the nervous system apart from nerve impulse conduction. <clears throat> Not every cell in the nervous system has to be involved in nerve impulse conduction. There are certain cells which are there for additional support, like uh, sort of <clears throat> to perform uh, more of administrative jobs and supportive jobs and all of those. We call them glial cells. A type of glial cells are Schwann cells. So Schwann cells are found here. So once again, go through this description now. The outermost layer of Schwann cells which surround the axon of the, um, of the neuron. This is what neurolemma or neurilemma would be. This sheath of Schwann cell, it can also be said. All right. Yes. Now comes the next term, which is nodes of Ranveer. A gap in the myelin sheath of a nerve between adjacent Schwann cells. This is what we call nodes of Ranveer. So basically these gaps. So if this is um, the myelin sheath, like one part of it, this is the next part. This is the next part and so on, of course. In between them, the axons are moving along. These parts, the junctions between adjacent uh, pieces of myelin sheath, we call them nodes of Ranveer. And remember, I told you, you can probably remember this. Uh, if you can remember Ranveer Singh, uh, the Bollywood uh, actor, right? So, of course, the spelling is different. This is R-A-N-V-I-E-R. But I'm just telling you to be able to recall it somewhere, some sort of hint. Okay, synaptic cleft. What is a synaptic cleft? This is what the synaptic cleft would be. So it's the space that separates two neurons. I think I've already drawn it and shown to you. Um, what exactly does it do? It forms a junction between two or more neurons. And why is it important? In nerve impulse conduction, synapses and synaptic clefts play a very, very, very important role. Right. So how exactly do nerve impulses get conducted? We've discussed in our Umang series. Check out the playlist and find out for yourself. OK, now polarized state. What is polarized state? Now, thinking about um, nerve impulse conduction, it's important to know the terms polarized, depolarized, repolarized and all of those. So polarized state would refer to the normal resting condition of the neuron, wherein the outer side of the nerve fiber the outer side of it carries a positive charge. A net positive charge is greater outside as compared to the inside. This is the normal resting state of the nerve fiber when nothing is happening. This is called the polarized state. Now, what happens is when a nerve impulse is approaching, um, these nerve fiber membranes, the axon membranes, at that particular point where the impulse is received becomes more permeable to positive ions, become more permeable to sodium ions. And as a result, there is an imbalance in this condition. There is an imbalance in the polarized state. So loss of that polarization is called depolarization. All right. Okay. Now uh, comes sensory neuron, a type of neuron which conducts impulses from the sense organs towards the central nervous system, towards the brain or the spinal cord. This is what we mean by the term sensory neuron, right? Then comes motor neuron. What would motor neuron be? Something that carries the response. So uh, motor neurons carry impulses from the central nervous system to the um, cells where response has to be, response would have to be initiated, which are most likely your muscles or your glands in any such areas where, for example, you're touching something uh, hot, really hot, like a candle or something like that, um, and you're pulling away your heart, your hand, sorry. The skin cells over there, they are able to, the pain receptors over there are able to feel that uh, burning sensation. So sensory neurons carry that message through those, through their channels and pass it on to our central nervous system, spinal cord and the brain. And from there, a response is initiated and the motor neurons bring back the signals and convey to our hand muscles that we need to pull it back. So this is what motor neurons do. And association neurons would obviously be those which are found in the brain and the spinal cord, um, relay neurons or connecting neurons, which interconnect sensory and motor neurons. So sensory, association and motor. 
So yes, this is how the order goes. Sensory from the sense organs uh, and then comes uh, association and then comes motor. So here would be the central nervous system, your brain and the spinal cord. Here would be your uh, sense organs and here would be your effector organs, which are your muscles and your glands. All right. So this is how the kind of uh, neurons would work. Now meninges. What are meninges? The three thin layers of tissue which cover and protect the brain and the spinal cord. What are they? Dura matter, arachnoid and pia matter. D A P. Remember it this way. The three layers of meninges. This is what protects our brain from a lot of mechanical shocks and uh, provides a lot of additional protection to the brain. Although there is um, the outer cranium, which is there as part of the skull. Okay, so this is what meninges are and an inflammation in the meninges would cause what we call meningitis. Then comes the cerebrospinal fluid. How do we abbreviate it? CSF. This fills the space between arachnoid membrane and the pia mater. Between arachnoid and pia mater, the space which is there that gets filled with cerebrospinal fluid so that a lot of additional mechanical shocks uh, can be prevented and um, lots of additional lubrication and nutrient uh, supply and oxygen supply and all of that can be facilitated to the central nervous system the brain and the spinal cord all right yes i think uh, that's about it so remember children i've given you the link and the de details already the coupon code is ambpro that you need to keep in mind and children Please click on the like button if you have found this useful. Share it with all your ICSE class 10 friends because sharing is caring. I want everyone to benefit from this. Stay subscribed to this channel because we will come up with more and more creative sessions for you in the days and weeks to come. And until we meet again, children, this is Ambika signing off. Stay happy and stay healthy. Bye-bye.